Hey, Father Brian here. I just thought I'd share a few words with you as we, uh, as we enjoy these Thanksgiving holidays. I, I want to share with you a story that, of an especially meaningful Thanksgiving that resonates deeply with me this year. My dad, uh, later in his life, suffered from Parkinson's disease, and I went to go visit him when I was in grad school as a Jesuit studying theology. I flew down to Florida, where for that Thanksgiving, it was just my, my mother, my dad, and, uh, and me. My brother and sister were with their extended families for that day. So my mom and I uh, you know, made the traditional dinner, uh, uh, but sadly, my dad was not able to, to eat much of it at all. Uh, with Parkinson's, as you advance in that disease, often you lose the ability to swallow um, and to even to speak, to articulate. So my dad wasn't really able to eat, um, but we got to dessert. And my mom had made her uh, famous key lime pie from limes from our backyard in Florida, where I grew up and where they lived. So my dad was eyeing the key lime pie. Uh, and so I took a spoonful and, and, uh, and gave him a taste. And gosh, he just smiled as he tasted and swallowed the key lime pie. So I gave him another taste and he smiled. That was uh, the last solid food he had. Um, a few days later, he entered hospice and, and died within about a month. I, I just always remember that Thanksgiving because it reminds me to, to focus on really the simple things. In that case, you know, a meal shared with my dad, the taste of a delicious but pretty ordinary key lime pie. Um, and really, the, even the, what I take for granted, the ability to swallow and taste food, which I love. The simple things are often those that most matter. So I find that uh, this Thanksgiving, I, I just, I'm focusing on the simple things. It, it's been a tough year for all of us to say the least, hasn't it? Maybe we need Thanksgiving more than ever. You know, we've dealt with the pandemic and all of its impacts. We've had another national reckoning with racism. We've dealt with the election and all of its ongoing impacts. And then we just had the, the normal stuff of any human life, the ups and downs that come with living, all that stuff. And it's been a challenging time. So maybe it's this holiday we could just really focus on the simple things in the relative quiet of this time, really, to, to get back to basics. And I, I just find myself thankful for what's most important in my life, a life which could be filled with such distractions. I, I'm very grateful to be part of this Santa Clara community, our faculty and staff who labor so much for the good of our students, for our students here whom I miss so much, our alumni and friends. I'm grateful to be a part of this community. I'm grateful for the Jesuits that I live with here who are my family in a sense here on the West Coast. I'm so grateful for them. I'm grateful for uh, my faith as a Jesuit as a Jesuit who's in education, I love my work. I'm grateful for uh, my health as I think about what my dad uh, endured in the last years of, of his life. Um, grateful for my many friends who fill my life in remarkable ways this year when human company became so important even as we connected virtually. So I just wanna say thank you Anthony DeMello is one of my favorite um, spiritual writers. He, he was an Indian Jesuit, died a, a number of years ago. Uh, he had a wonderful um, adage, you sanctify whatever you are grateful for. You sanctify or you make holy whatever you are grateful for. So I feel this Thanksgiving that I am surrounded by holiness. He also wrote, something very practical that I need to remember. It is impossible to be grateful and unhappy. It is impossible to be grateful and unhappy. So as I'm steeped in gratitude, steeped in holiness, I find myself, despite all the challenges, happy. And I have you to thank for it. And 
the God who gathers us together and blesses our lives. So from, um, from Santa Clara University, somewhat quiet campus this week, um, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Take care and God bless.